Winning comes in all shapes and sizes. It's different for everyone. One thing is certain, every day there's an opportunity for a win. Just like scratchers from the Virginia Lottery. Every day grab and go, every day giftable, every day fun. It's where anticipation meets instant gratification. Like the new Virginia Lottery Scratcher High Roller Blackjack with a chance to win up to 10 times your prize. Now that's an everyday win. Drive to a retailer near you. Odds of winning any prize, one in 4.16. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. We're going to cause trouble. Scott Farrell is calling the shots from the sideline. We're going to make fun of people. We're going to hurt people's feelings. It's Farrell on the bench. I believe in whipped cream with everything. All right, Farrell on the bench. Hour number two, Carver High in for Scotty tonight. He will be back tomorrow on Coast to Coast and the bench, as always. So the Cubbies are playing the Twins tonight uh, in Wrigley. Cubbies losing again. I mean, no no surprise there. Uh, the Twins and the Cubs. I mean, why? Hey, here's the one thing that can actually garner some attention to the Twins and the Cubs tonight. By the way, they got an in-game total of 15.5 in the eighth if you'd like to uh, jump on it with the plus 110 to the over. But here's what actually got the attention for the Cubs and the Twins tonight. The pregame and seventh inning festivities of Connor McGregor. Now, I don't know what was worse tonight. I think that he legitimately threw the worst ceremonial first pitch in the history of Major League Baseball. It's very possible. Now, there's a lot of contenders for this. 50 Cent at the Met game. Uh, the the Call Me Maybe girl, like, threw the ball straight in the ground at the Ray game the one time. What's her name? Carly Ray something. Um, but Connor McGregor might have beat them all tonight. He had the, probably the worst first pitch ever. And then he follows it up. Strong effort by Connor. Follows it up by singing the take me out to the ball game in the seventh inning stretch at Wrigley tonight. And I only got to hear a couple seconds of it because we're obviously doing the show. But, man, he put on a performance. He put on quite the show tonight. Uh, your boy Connor McGregor. So he doesn't fight anymore. But, hey, at least he uh, at least he did. Carly Ray Jasper. Isn't it Jepson Bavona? Come on. Carly Ray Jepson, isn't it? Jepson or Jasper Bavona? What's her name? Jespa. All right. There you go. No, Jespin. Sorry. Jespin. There you go, Bavona. Come on. Carly Ray Jepson. She was at the Ray game. Threw it straight in the ground. The call me maybe girl. I think Connor was worse. Because Connor McGregor is an athlete. Like, this dude, like, I get he's a fighter. He doesn't, you know, play a sport where he's throwing a ball or doing... But, geez, I mean, you'd think you'd have some kind of athletic ability to throw a baseball to, a, you know, just to another person standing, you know, a couple feet away from you. I mean, I give 50 Cent a pass. Give Carly Rae Jepsen a pass. Who's the other guy? Uh, Gary Delabate, he had an awful one at the Met game, too, the Howard Stern producer. These guys aren't athletes. Conor McGregor's an athlete. Awful job by him. Just geez, but it gave the Cubs a little attention tonight, and I have to hear the entire seventh inning stretch. Sounds like Connor did a really good job. <laughs> he doesn't fight anymore, but man, he loves making headlines. He was at the Cowboy game over the weekend too, sitting there yucking it up with Jerry Jones. How about fighting somebody? And I know he's hurt. He got hurt in his last fight. He, well, he lasted a couple seconds with Poirier before he broke his leg or his foot or whatever happened to him. Connor's tough to take, man. But I like when he does stuff like this tonight because it's hilarious. That's the, that's all he's good for now is a laugh because he doesn't actually fight anymore. It's good to laugh at Connor. Uh, all right, so elsewhere in baseball, the Cardinals have won again. It really is amazing. I, I thought for sure. This is another one. I, I think that I try to chase the Cardinals every single year, and I play their win total under. Basically just saying one of these years they're going to have a bad year. And I think three of the last four years – I've had the Cardinals absolutely buried. 
and I mean buried, in mid-July, and they rise from the dead to go and get over their win total. And they're doing it again this year. It's 86. I mean, they're just flying to it. A 10-game, now a 10-game winning streak is just going to push them over the, boom. They're going to probably win 90 games now with a week and a half left. It's sad. I can't believe I get suckered in every single year. But I, I am going to continue to play it every year until I win an under bet on the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> I really am. We welcome in all of our radio affiliates right here. Sports Map, Sports Byline, Sirius XM, the Mightier 1090, Pharrell on the bench, Mike Carver, Carver High, in for Scotty tonight. Talking baseball, we did a little NFL, get some college football in the mix this hour as well. Uh, Astros lead the Angels 5-1 to one right now. Dodgers and Rockies tied at fours in the eighth. Mariners and A's 4-2 Seattle. You know, Seattle beat them last night too. They could... Uh, uh, they both could be finished after this this by this weekend. Because with the Yankees and the Red Sox and the Rays playing each other, uh, the Jays, I mean, playing each other so much, that could be trouble. Braves lead the Diamondbacks 5-1. to one. That's significant for the Phillies, who are not going to gain any ground if the Braves win. They're going to stay three back. They do play a series in Atlanta, I believe, coming up on Monday, the last week of the season. I know the Phillies and the Braves have... At least three games left together with each other. Where are the Phillies this weekend as we the race to 82 continues? Uh, Phillies... Phillies have the Pirates this weekend. That better be a couple of wins. And then the Phillies are in Atlanta starting on Tuesday. Big three-game series before they wrap it up with, I believe, the Marlins. A lot of chances for the Phillies to not only get over this win total, but to possibly win the NL East if... The Braves can slip up a little bit. They are not doing that tonight in Arizona. All right, Pharrell on the bench. Carver High in for Scotty tonight right here. Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. We'll come back. A couple MLB futures we're going to dive into, then a little college football. We keep rolling on the bench right after this. Winning comes in all shapes and sizes. It's different for everyone. One thing is certain. Every day there's an opportunity for a win. Just like scratchers from the Virginia Lottery. Everyday grab-and-go. Everyday giftable. Everyday fun. It's where anticipation meets instant gratification. Like the new Virginia Lottery Scratcher High Roller Blackjack with a chance to win up to 10 times your prize. Now, that's an everyday win. Drive to a retailer near you. Odds of winning any prize, 1 in 4.16. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods, that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra-light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. And we are back. Pharrell on the bench, Carver High in for Scotty tonight, right here on Sports Grid Radio. Uh, my man Chris Pavone is with me tonight, and he threw another log on the fire for worst uh, ceremonial first pitch at a game. Uh, what do you got, Pavona? Fauci? You think Fauci was worse or better than the McGregor, Pavona? Worse or better? No, bet- much better than McGregor, only in the fact that Fauci is like 80 years old, so he at least <laughs> has an excuse to throw a bad pitch. Like, all these other people have excuses. Like, all the ones I brought up, 50 Cent, Carly Ray Jepsen, like, Gary Delabody. Like, they oh, all have I- excuses. I don't think Conor McGregor has an excuse. You said he's in a suit. I don't care about the suit. I mean, he's got to make a better throw. Has I mean, to make a better throw. Did he hit someone or did he hit the side <laughs> in the back? He's I lucky don't the know. backstop was there. <laughs> he's lucky the netting was there, or else he would have hit someone. Oh, what a what an awful performance. But at least he entertained everybody with the seventh inning stretch. So that's uh he did do a good job with that. So Bavona says Fauci, uh, but he actually does say McGregor was worse. So nice job by Chris Bavona uh tonight hanging out with us here on the bench. A uh, couple of MLB. We just gave you the scores. I'm keeping my eyes on the Giants and the Do- and the uh, and the Padres to see if they can somehow hang around. But with the Cardinals winning every night, nobody's going to be able to hang around. A couple of futures for MLB. Me and Scotty kind of brought these up. We showed the odds on coast to coast today. I wanted to dive into a couple of them a little bit further. National League MVP. 
Bryce Harper, your favorite, minus 130. Fernando Tatis Jr., plus 110. Then an enormous gap to Max Muncy at 20 to 1. Uh, and who cares about these other guys? Like Juan Soto, Trey Turner, Freddie Freeman. They're not winning the MVP. I, I actually could probably make a case for Max Muncy over these other two guys. I, I clearly, I mean, listen, you got to follow the odds. I mean, there's a week and a half left. Ma- Max Muncy's not winning. It's going to be one of these two guys. But I have a major issue with giving an MVP award to a team that doesn't make the playoffs. I think that anybody on the Padres should be completely disqualified from any postseason awards with the way they've played over the last two months. They should just take for I don't care if Tatis hits 400 with 40 bombs. The way that this team has choked in the last two months, that's right, San Diego choked. You guys know it. The way that they've choked, and look at Machado hitting one. Now, here's a guy who wants to make the play. Look at Machado hitting one into the second deck in left field right now. Uh, 26th of the year, second of the night. Machado says, I do want to make it. Too bad the Cardinals never lose. You waited too long to start this. But I can't give anybody any kind of MVP award on a team that is completely laid down like this team has. So I don't care if Tatis, how great he is. Forget it. Shouldn't win. Now, Harper says the same thing. The Phillies have had their moments as well. Harper has played great. He hasn't gotten a lot of help. They haven't had the monumental collapse that the Padres have had. In fact, they've at least gained ground and gotten themselves back into the mix in the second half since the All-Star break. So the Phillies were kind of out of it in the first half, and Harper has elevated them to get back into a playoff race, whether they make it or not. If So if it's going to be one of these two guys, and I have absolutely, and this is not me being biased because I have a preseason Bryce Harper ticket in 15-1, to one. I think it's going to be Harper. You cannot you cannot reward anybody on San Diego for this embarrassing two months. You can't do it. So sorry, Tatis. You'll have to get your MVP award another year. It's just not it's not going to happen here this year. American League, we've talked about till we're blue in the face. They're giving it to Otani. He's minus 3,500 at FanDuel right now. I mean, he's minus 3,500. Vlad has actually got a little closer. He was 15 to 1 last week. He's plus 750. I personally... Would give it to Vlad. I clearly weigh making the playoffs and being in a playoff race more than pitching and hitting for a team that's going to finish, you know, where are the Angels right now? See, nobody cares about them, so nobody knows where they are in the standings even. Uh, The Angels are 72-78. and They're 17 games out of first place. And in a wild card where everybody is in the mix for the wild card. There's two wild cards now. Everybody should be in the mix if you're a decent team. And the Angels are 12 and a half games out of that, too. The second wild card. But let's give Otani the MVP because he hits and pitches. Is he the most outstanding player in baseball this year? Yeah, he is. Is he the most valuable player in baseball this year? No, he's not. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is. He should win the award. He's not going to. It's a shame. Then there's the Cy Young. It's tough. (laughs) Robbie Ray's your favorite, minus 175. Cole's plus 165. I'll say this. I've been killing Cole a lot with Scotty on Coast to Coast. Rightfully so. I mean, he was embarrassing on Sunday afternoon against the Indians. Cole does have a chance to win this because of who he's going to pitch against the last two games. He pitches in Fenway on Friday night against the Red Sox. Massive game. And then he pitches the last game next Thursday in Toronto against the Blue Jays. So Garrett Cole has two games, two starts, where he's going to have an opportunity to win the AL Cy Young. If he pitches well in those two games, he will get it over Robbie Ray. Nobody wants to give the Cy Young to Robbie Ray. Nobody cares about Robbie Ray. It's just fact. I mean, even last night, I mean, Robbie Ray couldn't get it done against the Rays. If Garrett Cole pitches good against the Sox and the Jays in these two starts, he will win the Cy Young. Like, if he, he's plus 165 right now, this will flip on Friday if he beats the Red Sox. He'll go to minus 200. Another homer for the Padres. Tommy Pham getting involved. His 15th of the year. 4-1 to one, San Diego. Trying to hang on here against the Giants. Wow. How about that? So that's where I'm st- sitting with Cole. He's got an opportunity to win it. He's got two big marquee games that he's going to pitch in over the next uh, week and two days. He's got a chance to go grab it. The National League, I don't know. I, I mean, before Scherzer got to L.A., did any did anybody think he was having any kind of all-world year? 
you always get pumped up when you go and play for a huge team like the Dodgers. That's what's happened with Scherzer. He had the the masterful game last week. He's minus 210. I personally think Corbin Burns, if you look at the body of work for the entire season, he should win the Cy Young. He's plus 200. Is it worth a flyer? Yeah, it's probably worth a flyer. He could absolutely win the Cy Young over Scherzer. Burns has been that good from pillar to post in the NL. But that's it, really. I mean, it's down to two guys for all these awards as far as I'm concerned. It's Scherzer and Burns. It's Ray and Cole. It's Harper and Tatis. And it really is it's just Otani. I mean, you want to say Otani and Vlad? You can say it. Uh, it is. And for Rookie of the Year, like, Rosa Reina has been the favorite in the AL for, since, like, May. This kid, Ryan Mountcastle on the Orioles, should win the Rookie of the Year. He's been awesome. He's plus 350. I think he should win. Rosa Reina. Forget him. Give it to Mountcastle. Let's cash a little ticket on Mountcastle. We may or may not have had one when he had some bigger odds earlier in the year. So I think you see where my allegiances lie when it comes to the MLB future betting right now. NL East, so you can still get the Phillies at plus 310. They have three games with the Braves next week. You never know. NL West, Giants minus 115, Dodgers minus 105. Eh, that's not worth it, not worth it to me to even get involved there. Man, even if to win the National League, the Brewers are up to plus 350. Brewers are going to be sneaky, man. They're going to be really sneaky in these NL playoffs. They could throw those arms if they could just get hitting. And these and these guys, there's guys that like people. They would have no idea if they walked down the street and saw some of these guys: Avisel Garcia, Eduardo Escobar. These are good hitters that the Brewers have. Guys that are going to get big hits in the playoffs. And you couldn't pick them out of a lineup if you were outside of Milwaukee. People in Milwaukee couldn't pick them out of a lineup. And they're going to get big hits for the Brewers in the playoffs. I will back the Brewers to get out of the National League. Milwaukee time, baby. That's my squad to get out of the NL. I think they've got guys with timely hitting, and they've got Big time starting pitching with Burns, Woodruff, and Freddie Peralta. Josh Hader at the back end. Brewer baseball. Nobody wants to see the Dodgers in there again. All right, Pharrell on the bench. Carver High in for Scotty right here on Sports Grid Radio. We are rocking. When we come back, college football. The big bad favorites. All they do is not cover. We'll talk about all that. Keep looking at the baseball on the bench. Sports Grid Radio. Be right back. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Winning comes in all shapes and sizes. It's different for everyone. One thing is certain, every day there's an opportunity for a win. Just like scratchers from the Virginia Lottery. Every day grab and go, every day giftable, every day fun. It's where anticipation meets instant gratification. Like the new Virginia Lottery Scratcher High Roller Blackjack with a chance to win up to 10 times your prize. Now that's an everyday win. Drive to a retailer near you. Odds of winning any prize, one in 4.16. And we are back. Pharrell on the bench. Carver High in for Scotty tonight. He will be back tomorrow. Coast to coast and on the bench. We are hanging here with you. Taking a look at all the baseball tonight. Padres lead the Giants. Philly's got a big win against the Orioles. Yankees got a big win against Texas. But the Red Sox and the Jays also get big wins. They win again. So no blood drawn as far as no ground gain for the Yankees in the AL wildcard race. And the Cardinals won their 10th in a row. They never lose anymore. So everybody's in trouble there. Uh, College football now. College football. Here we go. Um, And I was talking about this today with Joe Lisi as we do the uh, college football full circle right here, Sports Grid Radio, every weekday uh, uh, right here. And the good teams in college so far, the teams that we pumped up and said, these are the only teams that can make the college football playoff, Nobody else could make it, which is the big five. Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma, and Georgia. 
Here's the one thing about these teams. First of all, we've already gotten some losses out of them. Clemson loses to Georgia. Ohio State loses to Oregon. Second of all, they don't cover. I mean, honestly, I mean, this is pretty embarrassing. Uh, when you look at the records of these teams, these five teams combined, uh, four wins, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten losses, and a tie, four, ten, and one, are those five teams ATS. Clemson's 0-3 ATS. Ohio State, 0-2-1 ATS. Alabama, 1-2 ATS. Oklahoma, 1-2 ATS. And Georgia's 2-1. and one. one of those covers, of course, was against Clemson, beating them straight up. The other one was when they just absolutely rattled UAB 56-7 uh, to seven or whatever it was. So Georgia's the only team with a winning ATS record out of these five. And I think it's still early in the year, and there's maybe these teams aren't as good as everybody pumped them up to be throughout the entire offseason and the summer, and you're getting ready for college football to start. And it's been hard the last few years because the same teams make the playoff every year. You know, it's these five teams. Notre Dame's got a couple of appearances. I mean, other than that, it's very rare that anybody else cracks into this elite status of making the college football playoff. So I think early in the season, expectations are so high for these teams. Maybe the lines are a little bit bigger than they should be. And it's been shown so far by the against the spread records of these teams. I, I mean, Alabama was not impressive against Florida on Saturday. They just weren't. Now, Alabama's always going to get some massive spreads. I'm interested to see when Alabama gets themselves into a good game if they hang them at 14 again against somebody. Which, I, I mean, listen, the games on Alabama's schedule that you're going to be waiting around to see if they, uh, you know, play anybody with a pulse, of course, is going to be against Texas A&M. It's going to be against Ole Miss. And now they play Ole Miss uh, in two weeks, a little less than two weeks. They play them on October 2nd. The big Matt Corral, uh, Bryce Young, two guys who are absolutely running away with the Heisman right now, according to people who think they know. Those are the only two guys who could win the Heisman, which is absolute bogus. If there's one future market in college football where you could still maybe find a, a, a long shot, you want to take a big, deep ticket, it's in the Heisman market. Because Heisman is so, uh, it just changes so quickly week to week. Matt Corral was 30 to 1 three weeks ago. Now he's plus 180. Bryce Young has been a f one of the favorites, as we know. He's sitting at 3 to 1 right now. The guy to grab, and I don't think this guy's very, you know, I think he's way too overhyped. But he was the preseason favorite. He was 6 to 1 at a lot of places, 8 to 1 at a lot of places, and now he's 25 to 1 as Spencer Rattler. Now, I don't think Spencer Rattler's as good as everybody makes him out. I think he's done absolutely nothing so far this year. I mean, they could have lost to Tulane. They could have lost uh, to Nebraska. And Spencer Rattler, not overly impressive in any of those games. But things change fast. And when there's nobody completely running away with the situation, and you could say Matt Corral's running away with the situation right now. That's all fine. But once he loses to Alabama and once he loses to Texas A&M, he won't be running away with the situation anymore. And around the same time that that's going to be happening, it's possible that Spencer Rattler suddenly has a huge game against Texas or a huge game against Oklahoma State. And then Spencer Rattler, who everybody, and they're dying to give the, the Heisman to Spencer Rattler. It's a preseason favorite. It's tough. Six billion people vote for the Heisman. There's way too many people involved with the voting. And honestly, half of them don't even watch the games. And that's the problem with the Heisman Trophy, and it's become that over the last 20 years. There's too many people voting for it, and most of the people that are voting for it don't watch. So, who are they going to vote for? Well, the people that everybody says their name a lot. Whose name gets said more than anybody for the Heisman this year so far? It's Spencer Rattler. Is he off to a good start? No, he's been brutal. If he has huge games against Texas and Oklahoma State, is he going to get elevated again? Yeah, he is. And you're getting a guy who the preseason was 6-1. to one. Now you're getting him at 25-1, to one, and we've only played a couple games. It's a decent shot for me. I think it's worth a poke. You can go nuts with it, but you're getting a, a preseason favorite at 25-1 to 1 when I don't think there's been anybody completely established that's going to take this thing over. There's an opportunity there. 
Now, the other problem with the Heisman is you need to have a team that's in the mix for the playoff. Only two guys in the last 20 years have won the Heisman with their teams really not being involved in the national title picture. Bobby Griffin III and, and Lamar Jackson. I mean, everybody else has pretty much been somewhat in the mix at the end of the season, playing huge games. So Rattler's going to do that. Now, is there anybody else on here? I mean, forget Sam Howell. You could take your Sam Howell Heisman tickets and you can rip them up after what he did against Virginia Tech in week one. And he's not even going to get a crack this year. You know, he's, he's just finished. Forget Sam Howell. He's 25-1 to 1 also along with Rattler. JT Daniels doesn't play, so forget him. Desmond Ritter is interesting from Cincinnati. His big moment is going to be in South Bend next Saturday. If Desmond Ritter shows up at South Bend and he beats up on the Irish and he wins a big game there and he has a great performance, that is going to push him into this situation. He won't be 25-1 to anymore if he has a good game against Notre Dame. That's a big spot, not just for him, but that entire Cincinnati program that day. Because they've gotten through Indiana, who's probably not as good as they were last year, but it's a Big Ten team, and that was a big win for Cincy to come back. If they go to Notre Dame and they win that game, they can then try to navigate throughout the rest of the American Conference schedule, go undefeated like last year, and at least at the end of the year this year, they're going to be able to knock on the door, look at the good old boys club and say, you know, we do got a big win here. We beat Notre Dame and South Bend. Massive game coming up next Saturday for Cincinnati and for Desmond Ritter possibly winning the Heisman. You could forget C.J. Stroud. Way too shaky. You can't. He's going to have a couple more bad games. You could just see it. Malik Willis has been awesome, but nobody's given a Heisman to anybody from Liberty. The running backs are, are interesting in Verdell, Henderson, and Kenneth Walker, but I don't know. It's tough for running backs to win. DJU, you could throw your tickets away. He's already down to 50-1. to 1. He's done. Cooked. Finished. It's hard right now. I think that your best shot is Rattler. Take a little blast with Rattler at 25-1 to 1 or Desmond Ritter. I think that those are the, the two places that you want to look right now when it comes to Heisman futures. And national title ones, it's even harder. I mean, Georgia and Alabama are 2-1. to one. Clemson, Ohio State are 12-1. to one. They're not winning the national title this year. They might not even make the playoff now. They both have a loss already. Nobody with two losses has ever made the college football playoff. I don't think it's starting this year. Oklahoma's 14-1. to 1. The way they've played so far, I could see them dropping a game or two. Oregon's 16-1. to 1. Got the enormous win over Ohio State. You think they're getting out of all those Pac-12 after dark games alive? I don't think so. There's going to be some crazy Saturday night game that kicks at 10.30 p.m. Eastern that you're going to wake up the next morning and see Oregon lost to, you know, UCLA or, you know, Arizona State. Like, they're, they're going to lose some crazy game in the Pac-12. Penn State's your, your horse right now. 40-1. to 1. But think about the road Penn State is going to have to take. for you. If you cash this 40-1 to 1 Penn State national title ticket, you earned it. They've already gone on the road and beaten Wisconsin. They've beaten Auburn at home. They're going to have to go and play at Iowa. They're going to play Ohio State. If they get through both of those and the regular season unscathed, they're going to have to beat probably either Iowa or Wisconsin again in the Big Ten title game. And then, in order for them to even cash this ticket, they'd have to beat probably both Georgia and Alabama. You talk about working hard. That is working hard if you are James Franklin and Penn State. So, yeah, 40-1 to 1 looks like a pretty big number. Think about the road they'd have to go through to get there. It's hard for me to sell you anybody but Georgia and Alabama winning the national title. It's very hard. I'd love to see it. I want to find ways for it to happen. But it is very, very tough to go against those two teams. But maybe Alabama showed you a couple chinks in the armor on Saturday. Maybe a team can pound the rock against them. Maybe Bryce Young eventually can make a couple of mistakes being his first year at the quarterback position for them. Jeez, I hope it happens. I'm so tired of watching those guys hold the trophy at the end of the year. A couple lines from this week in college football, too, when we come back. Pharrell on the bench, Carver High, 
in for Scotty tonight right here on Sports Grid Radio. Padres still up at Petco over the Giants. We'll look at a couple games this weekend in college football. Ryder Cup and more. We keep rolling on Sports Grid Radio for all the badge right after this. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the AdiZero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. If you love scratches from the Virginia Lottery, you'll love the High Roller Blackjack Scratcher with a chance to win up to 10 times your prize. Look for it at your favorite Virginia Lottery retailer. In fact, you can drive there right now. Now that's an everyday win. Odds of winning any prize, 1 in 4.16. And we are back. Frill on the bench. Carver High in for Scotty tonight. Scotty be back tomorrow. Coast to coast and on the bench, as always. We're rocking with you on Sports Grid Radio. Um, so I did get off a bit of a tangent there. I mean, my point started with the great teams that we all think are great in college football. They never cover, at least not this year. We're three weeks in. 0-3, 0-2-1, 1-2, 1-2, 2-1 for the Big Five. And Clemson and Ohio State have already fell down the rankings, and Oklahoma ain't far behind them because they're going to lose one of these games one of these weeks. So that was my initial point. Got off on the Heisman tangent, and away you go. We do have games this week. Maybe I will tell you who actually does cover. Who does cover these games? There are only how many now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 15 teams in college football that actually are undefeated ATS. Penn State, 3-0. and Michigan 3 and 0. That's going to change this week when and Rutgers is 3 and 0. So you got Michigan and Rutgers both 3 and 0 against the spread. One of them gets the loss this week. And it's going to be Michigan because Rutgers is going to cover that 19 points or 18 and a half, whatever you want to get. Rutgers is going to give them the give them a game up in the big house this week. Michigan another paper tiger. Paper tiger. Iowa 3 and 0. Look at the Big 10. Arkansas 3 and 0. Ole Miss 2 0 and 1. Utah State 3-0 and ATS so far, playing Boise this Saturday. That's like a noon east kick. That's like a 10 a.m. kick out in Utah. They're getting nine at home. They might beat Boise straight up. Love the Utah State Aggies against the Broncos coming up on Saturday. UTSA, Texas San Antonio, could win Conference USA this year. 3-0 and against the spread. Fresno State now 4-0 against the spread. They played a week zero game against UConn. They throttled them. So Liberty 3-0. Michigan State 2-0-1. A lot of Big Ten flavor. South Carolina 2-0-1. See, that's the thing. South Carolina, they stink. But they get a lot of sticks every week. I mean, they get a lot of sticks. You just saw it against Georgia on Saturday night. Yeah, they got hammered. They lost 40-13, to but they were getting 31 that's a cover. So there's your undefeated team's uh, ATS. So keep an eye on those, especially Utah State this week. And I like that UTSA team. That's a team to watch out for uh, in Conference USA this year. They're, they're, listen, they're cashing tickets, baby. That's what it's all about sometimes, cashing tickets. All right, this week, a couple of really good games. Uh, it's not. It doesn't probably have the marquee value of the last couple of weeks. Like We've had some real, like, you know, Highlight reel, you know, big name on the marquee type of stuff. Alabama, Florida, Penn State, and Auburn. You know, the week of Oregon and Ohio State. I don't think you have anything on that level this week. You start to really dip your toe into a lot of conference play. I think the Notre Dame-Wisconsin game at Soldier Field is very spicy. Man, this thing's at six and a half now. Woo! Heading towards the Badgers here. You just keep making that money line bigger for the Irish for me. You just keep doing it. Get it to get over two hundred for me, please. Give me a little two to one on the Irish against Wisconsin. What has Wisconsin done? Now this is like everybody loves bagging on Notre Dame, and Notre Dame is one of those teams you love them, you hate them. You guys know listening to the show, I love Notre Dame, but I'm also honest about Notre Dame. 
What has Wisconsin done to, that they should be six and a half point favorites in a neutral field over Notre Dame? Which, by the way, won't be a neutral field because it's going to be ninety five percent. Okay, maybe I'm stretching. Eighty five percent filled with Notre Dame fans. Tell me, Wisconsin six and a half point favorite? I know people love uh, ragging on Notre Dame, and they're not as good as the as the team as the last few years. But and Jack Cohn, don't forget about that either. There's going to be a little extra spice in that game for him. Facing his old team. You keep moving that lineup, please. Go ahead. Give me some more points. Give me some more money line value. I'm all about it. Georgia lay in the heavy wood again this week. 34 and a half against Vandy. They didn't cover the 31 against South Carolina. Vandy's worse than South Carolina. God, Vanderbilt's awful. That is an awful football team. Oh, I don't even think I can hold my nose there and take that. Texas Tech and Texas. These teams have played some wild games. Over the last few years. I saw this at 7.5 this afternoon when I was doing the show with Joe. Now it's up to 8.5. I like the Red Raiders getting some sticks here. I like it. They'll play Texas tough this week. I don't like the quarterback that Tyler shook me all night long. I can't stand him for Texas Tech. But they'll be in that ball game. TCU laying 8.5 against SMU is interesting to me. Coastal dropping the big number 36.5 against UMass. Texas A&M and Arkansas. Very interesting game in the SEC. Arkansas has played very well. Sam Pittman here. Uh, we told you how good they are covering their 3-0 this year. I think Pittman's something like 12-4 and covering the spread since he became the Arkansas head coach. Texas A&M, of course, missing their quarterback. They've got the kid, uh, Calzone, as we like to call him, playing. Uh, he stinks. When he came in the game against Colorado, he couldn't hit anybody. Anybody. They're minus five and a half. This was four and a half earlier. Razorbacks are a physical, physical football team. Very interested to see how they match up inside with Texas A&M, also a physical team. But they have a backup quarterback who stinks. And that's going to be a problem for the Aggies on Saturday at Jerry's World against the Razorbacks. Big problem. Florida State's actually getting a point and a half at home against Louisville. Louisville stinks. But Florida, I mean, how bad has Florida State gotten? They're 0-3, and they're getting points at home against Louisville. Oh, Norvell ain't getting out of this one alive either. He's finished. Now, we talked about how the the great, quote-unquote, great teams this year have not been covering. So now they bring the Clemson line down to a number you don't normally see. A road game in the ACC at North Carolina State, under 10 points. Clemson minus 9.5, a road favorite. I want nothing to do with Clemson. Their offense looks ridiculously out of sync from the past few years. I'll stay away this week, and this will be the week that they put the pasting on NC State. 9.5. Clemson, a number that short against North Carolina State. NC State, the Wolfpack in Raleigh. Dangerous. Dangerous. But man, they've been bad offensively. They can't score. They can't score points. Gators got the big rivalry game against Rocky Top. The Vols on Saturday night in the swamp, 20 and a half. Dangerous a lot of points in a rivalry game like that. Hypo can move the football, but their defense is awful. Everybody's going to be on Florida after watching them play Alabama tough last week. That could be dangerous. Be a little careful there with Florida on Saturday night. Could be a stay away from me. I like Kentucky on the road at South Carolina. I think it's a short number four and a half as a road favorite. Good spot for them. Kansas State and Oklahoma State. They can't make that number low enough. Those two teams have been god awful offensively so far this year. 45 and a half a total for Kansas State and Oklahoma State. They can't make the number low enough. Interesting spot for Michigan State. Sparty, a favorite now. A lot of people said going to be one of the worst teams in the Big Ten. They have opened the season, win on the road at Northwestern. They beat some tomato can at home the next week, and then a win on the road in Miami. A 3-0 Michigan State team at home against Nebraska, laying four and a half points. The tables turn for Mel Tucker and Sparty. Now the favorite. See how they handle it. Oklahoma never covers. Again, Laying over two touchdowns against a decent West Virginia team who beat Virginia Tech on Saturday. 
15 and a half. What has Oklahoma done this year to make you think they're covering two plus touchdowns against West Virginia? Ohio State. Now, they're playing one of the worst teams in the, in the world in Akron. I mean, Akron could probably lose to some high school teams. That's how bad they are. 49 and a half. God, that's a big number. 49 and a half. I mean, you'd like, I thought the Buckeyes would take it out on Tulsa the, last week. They didn't cover the game. Alabama laying the heavy wood, 44 and a half also against Southern Miss. Some good late night games. A lot of Pac 12 after dark this week, guys. Cal and Washington, Colorado and Arizona State, Oregon State, USC, Arizona and Oregon. All four games kicking 9 30 p.m. Eastern or later. Three of them at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Get the coffee ready on the East Coast if you love Pac-12 after dark action. The bailout, blowout. Get it all back in one swing or lose even more with the late night Pac-12 games on a Saturday night. Oregon laying four touchdowns to Arizona. Four touchdowns and a hook. Oregon State, USC, only 11 and a half. The Beavers splashing around at the L.A. Coliseum this Saturday night. And I like Colorado getting 14 and a half at Arizona State. Colorado, they're miserable offensively, but their D's pretty good. I only got whacked by Minnesota at home. I, I thought I was impressed with them against Texas A&M. They showed me a little something. And you know what Arizona State showed me? Nothing. They That's another team. They never cover. They'll win the game. They never cover under Herm. Awful under Herm covering the spread. Some good games in college football this week. Like I said, not marquee stuff, but you don't have an Alabama-Florida. You don't have a whiteout at at Happy Valley with Penn State and Auburn. But you have some very interesting games. And Michigan and Rutgers at the Big House, which I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the 3-0 ATS teams. How can you get? How can you put so much faith in Harbaugh and Michigan already that they're going to cover nineteen? That's not the same Rutgers team at all. And you know, I destroy Rutgers on a regular basis. They shouldn't be in the Big Ten. They're a different team when Shiano's the coach. They play hard. They were spunky last year in the Big Ten. They are already three and zero. We've got that win total that I played. I played their win total at four. I need one more win for the push, two for the win when we get into conference play here, and I think that they can get it. Are they going to win at the big house on Saturday? No, probably not. But 19 points? They've played Michigan tough the last few years. Tough. Let's go, baby. We're back in Rutgers. And I finally found UNLV. I, I, I didn't know if they were playing this week. Uh, 30 and a half at Fresno. So Fresno State off the big win, finally ranked. They're off to a 4-0 start. And they got UNLV coming to town with a 30 and a half number. That's on Friday night. Liberty and Syracuse on Friday night. How bad is Syracuse football? They're getting six and a half points at home to Liberty. Who beat them last year, by the way. That's a, that's how embarrassing it's gotten for Dino Babers and Syracuse. They are getting six and a half points at home to Liberty. Yes, Liberty's good. They're still Liberty. Syracuse football just has spiraled away. Thursday night, a good game, too. That Marshall App State game... That's going to be better than the Carolina-Houston game on the NFL side. The Marshall App State game is going to be very good. Spicy game on Thursday night to start the college football week. Marshall blew a game last week. Oh, they were just brutal. App State at home on a Thursday night. That's going to be a lot of fun. Wake Forest and Virginia on Friday night. A couple good Friday night games as well. So there's your college football slate for week number four. Pharrell on the bench. Carver High in for Scotty. Right here on Sports Grid Radio, we come back and we wrap it up. See what's going on in baseball before we get out of here. Carver High in for Sky. We'll be right back. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra-light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. If you love scratches from the Virginia Lottery, you'll love the high-roller blackjack scratcher with a chance to win up to 10 times your prize. 
Look for it at your favorite Virginia Lottery retailer. In fact, you can drive there right now. Now that's an everyday win. Odds of winning any prize, 1 in 4.16. And we're back. We're on the bench. Carver High in for Scotty. Wrapping this one up before we get out of here, let's take a look at what is going on in baseball. The Giants slowly climbing back into it here. Now 4-3, to three, top of the fifth. They just got a couple back. Looks like Buster Posey maybe with the big fly here to make things cooking for the Giants. Padres will probably choke this game away. That's what they've been good at. Uh, good night for the Phillies. They actually beat the Orioles 3-2. to two. Problem for them, the Braves are winning 5-1 in Arizona right now against the D-backs. The Astros are crushing the Angels 10-4. Mariners lead the A's 4-2. to two. We just mentioned 4-3 Padres over the Giants. Uh, Pirates beat the Reds tonight. The Reds' ship is sailing away. The Yankees with a 7-1 win over the Rangers. Judge, Gallo, and Stanton with homers. But the problem for the Yankees, Red Sox beat the Mets 6-3. Blue Jays beat the Rays 4-2. So they gained absolutely no ground whatsoever in the AL wild card race. The Cardinals win their 10th in a row. It's just amazing. Uh, 2-1, they beat the Brewers tonight. 10 in a row. I mean, they're going to go from being absolutely nowhere near making the playoffs in early August, late July, early August. How about early September? I feel like they were like three weeks ago. They weren't even in the mix. They're going to end up winning the second wild card with a week to go. Because these other teams lose every night. The Cardinals haven't lost in weeks. They're going to they're gonna have the second wild card locked up by the early next week. They can, they're going to be able to line up their pitching for the wild card game. Amazing. And they're going to pitch Wayne right in that game. And as Scotty keeps saying, if it's the Giants, they're going to have a chance with Wayne right on the hill. Listen, uh, tremendous stuff tonight. Thanks, everybody, for checking it out. Chris Bavona, awesome job taking care of business here on the bench. Scotty will be back tomorrow. Carver High here with you. Pharrell on the bench. Sports Grid Radio. We'll see you on Coast to Coast tomorrow. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas. The Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. We did it again. Verizon was just named America's most reliable network by Root Metrics for the 16th time in a row, proving once again that nobody builds networks like Verizon builds networks. That's why we're building 5G right. That's why there's only one best network, Verizon. Best and most reliable based on Root Metrics reports from second half 2013 to first half 2021 of three operators on all network types combined, not specific to 5G networks.